So, I am here with Bill Farmer. Bill, thank you for joining us at DragonCon 2014. My pleasure. I've been having a blast. I am so glad to hear that. Now, is this your first DragonCon? Yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. So, I've been to a lot of cons uh -huh. around the country and the world, but this one takes a cake. I mean, this is, this is insanity, folks, <laughs> but a good insanity. A lot of fun. That's great. Have you seen a lot of fun costumes that you like? Oh, it's amazing. I don't know where they, where they get them. I mean, they're obviously custom made, mm -hmm. custom designed for the person. And uh, the detail and the hours that went in, went into, uh, it, it just blows my mind. You know, it's just incredible. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Like Halloween on steroids. You know? <laughs> that's 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 a good a, a description. The other one I've heard is like the Mardi Gras of conventions. There you go. <laughs> Mardi Gras and Halloween put together and you've got this. Yes. So I'm really glad you're at Dragon Con this year. As people probably are aware, you are a Disney legend mm -hmm. because you do the voice of Goofy mm -hmm. as well as Pluto and more recently a uh, third character. Oh, I've, I've done do about seven or eight characters for Disney. Uh, right. Classic uh, Seven Dwarfs. I'm Sleepy. Mm -hmm. I am um, in the new 7D series, which is the Seven Dwarfs. I'm Doc. So I'm two dwarves. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, Horse Horse Collar. Another, right. I'm his original voice. He never spoke really before. I took over for him and Prince and the Popper, Sheriff of Nottingham, and various other ones. That's great. So now, um, you have done a lot of, or are doing, and have done a lot of legacy voices, like in mm -hmm. Space Jam, where yes. you've done the Looney Tunes voices and you've mm -hmm. done the Disney. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like doing a legacy voice versus an original, and what your experience has been? Well, you have to be very careful when you're doing a legacy voice because there's already. Uh, you know, a lineage with these characters. People know these characters mm -hmm. and they generally don't like when those are changed. So when I got the audition for Goofy, I had to match exactly what Pinto Colvig had done oh, since 1932 until the 60s and just do an impression of that voice. Uh -huh. After a couple of years of doing Goofy, then gosh, it kind of started uh, getting in my blood and I started kind of taking on, adding my own little things to the character, uh -huh. and now it's kind of 50-50. We've kind of melded into one creature, I think. That's really great. So when you um, embrace a character like that, and I know that a lot of a lot of voice actors have said it's it's about the voices, but it's really about the acting. So Absolutely. is there a way that you get into character? Um, I know you said you had you had studied the previous voice. Is there mm -hmm. something you do to get into character? It, uh, if it's a new character, you have to, for example, Doc on the 7D, whose voice is kind of up here and it's a little elf-like. Uh, I looked at a picture of him and I decided, what is this guy like? And what are his traits? What He's wearing glasses, he's kind of very studious, he is the inventor of the group, so he comes up with all these crazy contraptions, so he's kind of the smart one. And he had a little pocket protector in one of the pictures I saw, and so he's kind of smart and probably nerdy a little bit. And he's also kind of the conscience of the group. And so I was kind of thinking, maybe he's kind of like a Jiminy Cricket. Oh, and nice. let your conscience be your guide, you know, that kind of thing. And so I kind of based him on Jiminy Cricket and expounded from there, gave him a little bit more of an elfish voice and more articulation because I figure someone very smart would be very precise in the way he speaks. Uh -huh. And that seemed to strike a chord with the animators and yeah, that's our voice for that character. Great, now the 7D, it, which is, you know, a newer show from Disney mm -hmm. with a different kind of art style and everything. Right. It's got a great cast of a lot of amazing voice actors, including, of course, yourself and then Billy West, Maurice mm -hmm. LaMarche, Kevin Michael Richardson. Right. Talk, if you could, a little bit about the voice acting community and how it is working with those kinds of folks. And I think Tara Strong and... No, uh, Tara's not. Oh, Lee I'm Allen sorry. Baker is oh, one okay. of Jess Harnell. Jess Kelly Harnell. Osborne. It's oh. her first series. Oh, wow. And... Uh, uh, she's doing a great job. Uh -huh. uh, uh, no, it's uh, with this cast, you just really got to step up the plate and bring your best stuff because these guys are the icons of the business. Uh, and it's a little intimidating at first working alongside them, but you know, after a while, you loosen up, you start having fun, you play mm -hmm. with everybody, and everyone's so quick and sharp and right on their character that it keeps you on your toes. Right. It makes me a better actor as well. 
That's great to hear. Now, it's funny that you say it's a little intimidating because, sure. of course, I would think that other voice actors might say, well, Bill Farmer, you know, Goofy and all these great characters, and you've done Yosemite Sam and everything. I would think they'd think you were a little intimidating. Have you had any experiences with younger voice actors uh, approaching you and what kind of, like with Kelly Osbourne mm -hmm. or someone like that, how does that... Uh, What's your experience with that, basically? Well, yes, newer actors definitely do kind of get the shakes a little bit because it is kind of a, an intimidating situation. Uh -huh. And I know from Jess Arnell, who works closely with Kelly because they play a couple, the, the glooms, kind of the nemesis of the dwarves, mm -hmm. that she was very kind of frightened at first. And Jess was telling her, no, just kind of have fun, loosen up, entertain yourself, have a good time. And has kind of worked her through and gave, given her tips over the the uh, season and she's gotten to be a wonderful voice actress and really brings a lot of life to that character. That's really great to hear. Um, it's interesting because for instance someone like Kelly Osborne, you know, mm -hmm. she's she's been known for a while sure. as, you know, because of her father and everything like that. And sometimes you also get in voice acting people who are more known as face actors sure. and then mm -hmm. they come into the voice acting community. Uh, what do you think of that whole dynamic and how that works out, especially in, for instance, the way that they're in movies more, possibly mm -hmm. because of the name or something like that? What's your opinion of all of that? <laughs> it totally depends on the character they're playing. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. If mm -hmm. you get a famous celebrity to do a voice just because they're a celebrity, and that generally doesn't work that well, mm -hmm. uh, and there's no reason for it. There's a lot of great voice actors that would, you know, need the work and would be uh, happy to do that. On the other hand, there are certain actors, and they've done this since the beginning. Back with uh, Alice in Wonderland, they had Edwin doing, uh, you know, the Mad Hatter. Right. Now that voice just fit that character. Mm -hmm. In the same way, Tim Allen did a great job with uh, Buzz Lightyear, Tom Hanks as uh, Woody. Those guys just, they brought something to that role. It wasn't because they were Tim Allen and Tom Hanks, although that was obviously, you know, the executives think, oh, that's, but they worked with those characters. They gave them the right soul. If it's miscast, doesn't matter if it's a celebrity or not, it's probably not gonna work. Right. And the legacy is they used to, Phil Harris played uh, Baloo in Jungle Book. I can't imagine anyone else playing him. And right. he was a celebrity. So it has a, a long history of doing that. Mm -hmm. But if it's done just for celebrity sake, just to have a, a name in the movie, then uh, not too much for it. It doesn't work as well. Mm -hmm. Um, now let's go back a little bit. You had mentioned earlier on um, doing an impression of Goofy when mm -hmm. you were, you know, um, auditioning for that role. I know that you have a history of being an impressionist. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your early times, yeah. earlier times in the business. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started and and how your career got to the point where you were Goofy and now all of these other characters. Well, I started out uh, as a DJ. My okay. degree was in broadcast journalism, oh. and I was one of those kids since you know, I was a little kid. I loved the movies, cartoons, and would practice them on Saturday mornings and mm -hmm. do my bullwinkle walking around the house, you know, <laughs> never thinking that it would be anything. Right. Got into radio, started using some celebrity impressions and stuff on the air as just way to kind of pass the time and bring in more listeners and I do the wolf band we do a rock and roll show I bring in wolf man oh baby hey how's it going wolf man oh we having a good time today Bill we're going to be playing stacks of wax from dusk till dawn baby so I would do these characters and kind of develop them uh -huh. and then I was in uh, Dallas Texas in the early 80s and there was a comedy club that uh, and I went to it one night and I said you know I could probably do something like that they had an open mic night every Tuesday so I wrote a little routine went up the next Tuesday night mm -hmm. and got a pretty good response from some impressions and just kind of built it from there and within a, a year or so I was uh, traveling the comedy circuit around Texas and the south it kind of just built and built until 1986 we decided to move out to California and give it a shot out here and about four months later, I got this call, do you do any of the Disney characters? And I said, gosh, well, I can kind of do a Mickey Mouse. And my, that's all I could say is that. So, but Wars Goofy was right in the wheelhouse. And out of a thousand or so people that tried out, they liked mine. And I'm, they're still using me, so I guess they like me. 
I think that's great. And like around the same time that you started doing Goofy, mm -hmm. Tony Anselmo came in, and Lucy Taylor, mm -hmm. and Wayne Allwine. So was it kind of like uh, a little bit of a like new era where you all kind of sort of came in at the same yes. time and crafted yeah. your own? Can you talk a little about that and working well, with them? Well, unlike any other studio I've worked with, uh, Wayne, Lucy, Tony, and myself became like a family. I mean, it was so closely knit. And we saw each other socially. We just kind of had that magic gel that holds a group like that together. Tony is like Donald. Wayne is like Mickey, and uh, Rusi is like uh, is like Minnie. And uh, we unfortunately lost Wayne a few years ago. Yes. Uh, and that was kind of the end of that era in a way. But uh, these characters go on, and as Wayne used to say, we just carry these. The torch for these characters for a while and then pass it on and uh, but it'll always be a, a great period in my career that's a really sweet way of putting things speaking of wayne's john wayne impressions do you do your john wayne well of course john wayne you gotta get them tauntauns in a circle here at on the planet Hoth, or whatever you would do today, I guess would be kind of bizarre. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So tell me of the characters that you've done. I know obviously Goofy mm -hmm. would be a favorite, but other than Goofy, since everyone knows that one, what have been a couple maybe outside your wheelhouse that you yeah. really discovered you like to do once you got into it? Well, one of my favorites is, uh, and I don't, they don't use the character too much, the Sheriff of Nottingham from Robin Hood, who is uh, voiced by Pat Buttram. You remember, Pat Buttram used to be on the series Green Acres, and he has a voice like that, and I always really enjoyed doing that voice. So whenever I get a chance to do that, I'm just overjoyed. I even got to do that as an incidental character on an upcoming episode of The 7D. Oh, that's great. And he was like the, from the, you know, uh, Mr. Douglas, how would you like to buy a genuine... It's that character. That's fantastic. So one more question, uh, since we're going to have to wrap it up. You've done a lot of cartoons and a lot of movies. I know you've also done some video games, mm -hmm. including, uh, I know, like Kingdom Hearts and yes. things that are more kind of in the, in the right. general group of stuff you might have done before, but also kind of like... I think it was, what, Evil Dead, Dead Oh, Rising. I've done a lot so, of those kind of things over the years. Can you yes. talk a little bit about, you know, the... the animation in that versus like doing animation versus video games and also the different like the more serious ones versus the more cartoony in your experience there uh well the uh video games are a whole different ball game in that a video game can have so many di lines of dialogue uh can have thousands of lines of dialogue depending on what your character does mm -hmm. it has to kind of cover all bases of what you do with the character mm -hmm. uh, i go back to you know sam and max hit the road as the original voice for sam which uh, is just one of my favorite games i've ever done done and just had a great time doing that. Other ones, uh, Yakuza, and, you know, or Yaku I don't even know how to say it. I played uh, a very serious detective in that and uh, so it was a, a drama uh, role, mm -hmm. much more serious. A lot of the military ones that you do, like I did one where you know we were fighting the zombies and got a strange direction. They said, okay, the zombie has ripped your arm off and he's beating you with it. <laughs> and you have to, ah! You know, they always say the dying and the yells for the last day because you're going to rip your throat out doing that. Ah! Now, I'll, ooh, impacts, and ah! You're being stabbed, ah! You know, and that's kind of thing. And then you get out of the session. You go home and you drink a lot of tea because your voice sounds like the Godfather. Hey, I like it. I like it. So thank you so much for being here and doing this with us. Could you, for the, for the readers, can you say in Goofy's voice, um, Please read comicmix.com. Well, I can't do a liner. Disney would oh, have to okay. buy the company then. Okay. But I can certainly can uh, do that. Can you say something that Disney would be okay with as Goofy? Yes. Well. Or, or something. Gorge. Howdy, folks. It's your pal Goofy. Oh, yep. I can do that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And just one more thing. A Pluto bark? Woo! <laughs> Bill Farmer, everyone. The meters everyone. went like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure.